Team Ineos don't just have a new name, they've got a new bike too. This is the brand new Pinarello Dogma F12, and it is an absolute weapon. Look at it. And it's even in the new, as of yet unseen, Team Ineos livery with this really smart burgundy fade running up it too. But um, if, if you're wondering why I'm here by a river in a field in the middle of nowhere with it, well, it's because this is probably the hottest bike in the world right now. And Pinarello and Team Ineos agreed we could only film it if we came to a place where no one would see us doing it. So this is the place where I always come when I want no one to see what I'm doing. Anyway, the F12 has a lot to live up to because the F10 was such a special bike, having won in pretty much every conceivable way. Sprints, uphill finishes, breakaways, and arguably in 2018, the F10 was the most successful World Tour bike. It won seven stage races, including the Giro and the Tour. And remarkably, at the hands of Team Sky, it won four of the last six Grand Tours. Now, key to the F10's successes was that it was a great all-round performer. And the F12 appears to be building on this. All the best bits from the F10's design have been kept for the F12, so we still have a full carbon monocoque frame made from Torre 1100 carbon fiber. We've got the concave down tube section so you can get more aerodynamic bottle cage integration on the frame and the flat back tube sections for improved aerodynamics as well. And the little aerodynamic fork flap dropouts. Nice. Like the F10, the F12 will be available in both rim brakes like we have here and also a disc brake version too. But what's different about the F12, I hear you ask? Well, lots of things. One of the key design objectives with the F12 was to make it more aerodynamic. And to this end, there's been lots of little tweaks all over the place. Firstly, there's much better cable integration. This helps clean up the look of the frame and give it a much tidier silhouette. And Pinarello actually did computational fluid dynamics studies and found that it was able to reduce 85% of the drag caused by the cables on the new bike. The remaining 15% is just where we have these little bits of cable sticking out here for the brake calipers. Key to hiding all those cables out of the wind, the F12 has a completely new cockpit, integrated bar and stem called the Talon Ultra. Now this is an area where Pinarello felt that big aero gains could be made because the handlebar of a bike typically represents 20% of the frontal area. Now this bar is said to represent a 5% aerodynamic improvement over the previous handlebar on the F10, the Talon Aero, and that was said to be 28% more efficient aerodynamically than a standard round bar and stem. The new bar is said to be lighter and stiffer as well, and in terms of routing the cables through it and down through the stem and into the rest of the bike, it wasn't simply a case of just cramming them in. Pinarello worked really hard to optimize the angles and, and routing of the cables so that they're not going through too tight an angle, as this can compromise the shifting or the braking performance. There's also a really nice little plate at the front here, which we'll show you, where you can unscrew that to get access to the routing as well. There's also a new fork. Now, this new Onda fork is said to be more aerodynamic than the previous one, and part of that is down to this area here. It actually is deeper than on the F10's fork, and the theory here is that it helps channel and guide the air better as it flows past the fork. This is said to result in a 15% drag reduction over the previous fork, and the disc brake version is said to have a stiffer fork as well to help cope with the torque steer and torsional strain of having the disc brake mounted on one side. This is the rim brake version though, and you may have noticed that gone is the single mount caliper we had on the F10. The F12 has direct mount brakes with two mounting points, which is really cool because with their two mounting points, direct mount brakes are just, well, stiffer than a single mount. On the rest of the frame, there are loads of little tweaks here and there to help sort of make the frame more aerodynamic and also stiffer. So on the chain stays, you can see that they're actually quite a bit taller 
than they were on the F10. And also the bottom bracket's been beefed up a bit as well. And this apparently results in 10% more lateral stiffness than on the F10. Now, overall, the aerodynamic savings are said to be eight watts at 40 kilometers an hour. Now that might sound like a lot to you, or it might not sound like much at all, depending on your perspective. But if you were to consider riding a three week, 3,500 kilometer grand tour, I'm pretty sure I know what I would pick, and I'm pretty sure Chris Froome would pick the same too. Tire clearance has been increased to a claimed 28 millimeters, although looking at it, I reckon you'd get way more in than that. And if you don't want to use the most Talon Ultra handlebar, then there's also an adapter that goes in here so that you can still route the cables through if you want to use a standard bar and stem. And something else I've noticed is that there's these little split spaces. Having split spaces is a good design because it means if you want to adjust your stack height and where the spaces are, you don't have to reroute your brake cables, which is especially useful if you've got hydraulic lines. The frame set is compatible with both mechanical and electronic group sets. This is the DI2 version, so we've got the DI2 junction box housed in this really neat little space on the down tube, and that's where your front derailleur barrel adjuster would also go if you were running mechanical. There's 13 different sizes available, which is pretty comprehensive for the frame, and the handlebar comes in 16 different sizes. What about weight? Well, the claimed weight for the unpainted rim brake frame is 820 grams, and the unpainted disc brake frame is a little bit heavier, 840 grams. But I'm gonna weigh the complete bike. I've also got a disc brake one, so I'll weigh that as well. 6.97, pretty light about the UCI limit. So 7.5 kilos for the disc brake one. A little bit heavier. This is the disc brake specific version. And in case the Ineos colors aren't for you, then this is one of the other liveries that you'll be able to buy in actually this build as well with the SRAM Red Access Group Set. It looks really smart. And I like how the paint scheme is used to accentuate the, uh, the asymmetry of the frame as well. That's smart. And overall, this just looks so much neater and tidier than the rim brake version. You don't have the cable coming down at the front to the front caliper, and there's no quick release lever on the front either. It just looks a lot sleeker and a lot cleaner. And dare I say it, faster. There you have it, the brand new Pinarello Dogma F12. And well, alongside the Dogma FS, that's two new bikes from Pinarello in as many weeks. They certainly have been busy. Now let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you think that the F12 will win the Tour de France? And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you missed Dan's video where he did a first look on the Dogma FS, well, you can watch that by clicking down here. I, uh, well, this, this bike's in GCN colors, isn't it? I mean, I should, I should probably just keep, keep, keep this one, I think. Oh, yeah.